Bruce, you'll be heading off to Doha soon, where you are the main organizer of Agriculture, Landscapes and Livelihoods Day. Set up in conjunction with COP18 and uh, being in Qatar, the subject is on solutions to climate change in dry lands. Can you tell us a bit about what the particular added value of this event will be? Uh, so it, all, uh, this is now called All Five Day. Uh, before we were Agriculture and Rural Development Day. So there's a, a, a very serious move to try and broaden the agenda, to shift it to landscape levels where we think, thinking about forests, we're thinking about land. And just as an example, in this one, uh, UNCCD used to have a land day. They've now joined with us to put on this all five day. We also have some of the major forestry organizations participating during the course of the day. Why has the focus shifted uh, towards landscapes? Why is it uh, so important to consider both land and forest? Okay, so if you remember that we're, we're in Doha, we're together with COP18, and so if you think of some of the key things that are being negotiated this time, one of them is around forests. Uh, so there's a whole mechanism called RED+, Plus, and part of that is trying to see how you can conserve forests for carbon sequestration. But what is the, dri what is the key driver of deforestation? It's agriculture. So perhaps 75% of um, deforestation is caused by agriculture. So it's, it's almost... You know, it's obvious that forestry and agriculture have to work together uh, if you're going to ensure food security and balance it with forest conservation. So it's a key reason for being together in Doha. Um, the, the All Five Day is part of the COP18 meeting in a way. So it, it is interesting to look at the importance of the All Five Day in light of climate change and negotiations that are taking place there. What can be done and by whom to foster the resilience of smallholder farmers in rural areas? So that, that'll be quite a focus at All Five Day, looking at real practical solutions to moving forward. And um, so if I give you one example, and it includes uh, the two platform members are putting it on, it's one of the round table, it's WFP and IFAD, and they've joined up with uh, International Research for Climate and Society, and they're looking at, at what you need to do to ensure resilience, what practical steps there are. And so they're looking at climate information services, diversification in farmer portfolios, and trying to pull together the lessons and best practices. So it's, it's all the key agencies that are dealing with rural development and landscapes that are coming together. Mm -hmm. and, there, and is there any particular link towards the negotiations or is it coincidental? Are you, are you working on the fringes, so to speak? I think it's, it's both. In the, this, this particular COP is, is in some ways it's historic in that agriculture is on the agenda in the, in the Substa meeting. And from, from the Durban Agreement last year, it is said that there's going to be a decision on agriculture in Doha. So in some ways, it's really important to have the focus on agriculture as part, you know, this day is going to put extra focus on agriculture. However, I think we all recognize that the, the negotiation process is painfully slow. Mm. And we're, we're heading for a four degree warmer world at this rate without any major measures put in place by the UNFCCC to deal with mitigation or adaptation. So we really have to, how do we get action on the ground going tomorrow? And so all five days also about getting together at a particular venue and looking for how we can all work together as organizations to get things going on the ground immediately. Mm. So we're going towards um, the outcomes already, possible outcomes, and you know, you're organizing the All Five Day. What are your possible outcomes? What are you aiming for specifically? And w maybe you can give us a little bit of an idea for the 
in terms of their relevance to other platform members. One of our aims, and I've, I've more or less said this, is really to put a heightened focus on agriculture and food security in the hope that there really is a decision in Doha. But then the other aim is, is, is really to, to distill best practices, lessons for moving forward immediately with actions either within organizations or in national constituencies in terms of national adaptation planning, in terms of, for example, climate smart agriculture. And another example would be IFAD, where they've put a, a major a program in place on uh, uh, climate smart agriculture. And so they're looking for best practice and how to move forward immediately in the next coming, in the coming years. Mm. So yeah. it's outcomes both at the negotiations that we're interested in, but also let's just get on and get the business mm. going. I assume that you're already working on some messages. Um, you usually have documents that you look at um, and you surely don't want to release any of that up front. But can you give us maybe a glimpse on maybe what is the most likely to be an important message that uh, participants can agree on and that will will go out afterwards? I think most participants are really looking for a decision on agriculture and in particular a, 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 an agenda item in Substa where, there's, where there is a substantive discussion on agriculture. Looking at, for example, win-win technologies that can help with adaptation and mitigation. So one of the key messages will just be about let's get an agenda item in Substa where we can have substantive discussions on the way forward. Okay. Thank you very much, Bruce. Okay. Good.